What's the deal? Hold on, real quick. What it do? Okay. Assassin's I like that. Creed. Three, 23 hoops. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hell yes, uh, yeah, that game was all right. Free runner. So, what's the you deal, man? Climb, climb buildings, shit. All good. Can't Everybody, call it, man. welcome back. Every day above ground is a good one. Man, every day above yeah. ground is a good one. The Devo and Chris Joe show. So look, we were supposed to have uh, my man Wilson Chandler on. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. He got he got busy or whatever it is. Um, but if he ends up hopping on, we got some stuff for you. If not, we're trying to get Brittany Sykes on. She's uh, she's actually playing ball overseas in Hungary, um, she, which is crazy because she just got done with it, with her uh, season over in the WNBA. But what's good, Joe? Let's start. Over there. Yeah, I want to know what's good with you, man, because I know you, you, you've you been entering the season going full out. You know what I mean? So you, you've you been in it, practice every day. Mode. That's what I'm saying. So kind of update us. Let us know what's going on. Well, you know, we had two preseason games, which we both won. Two and on the preseason. We were supposed to have three, but the team, you know, I don't know. If they, I don't want to say they were scared, you know, but – they, 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 they reneged on their, you know, that they wanted to play. Then they said, nah, for whatever reason. So that's cool. We have a, oh, okay. our first official event this weekend um, out here in Montreal, which is going to be a good test for us. We're playing some, uh, some, some older guys, you know what I mean? Prep, but still older. So Montreal, there's a thing called, we have high school basketball, then we got something called Seja, which is a preparatory stage as well. It's not really a prep school, but now with the clearing house and the way it works in the States, that's considered a prep, but these guys could be as old as 20 years old, you know, and then oh, wow. their eligible, then their eligibility ends up being two years in the NCAA if they so happen to get a scholarship. So they only get two years of eligibility. So it's kind okay. of, that's kind of how it works. So we play uh, one prep out of Canada and then two siege of teams um, from the area, which should be a good test for us. We're da- we're out we're we're down a couple guys due to injuries and things like that, but we're figuring it out. Got to be real creative in practice, you know what I mean. So now I'm understanding the value of you know like a walk on, for instance, when you get to college, there's never going to be a shortage of players because there's going to be someone to at least get five guys on the court so we can simulate five on five action. So we've been having trouble with that. I've been having to jump in some of the practices just to we might need you know another player, we might need me and the assistant to jump in, which is fun for me, um, you know, because I don't hold back. I'm gonna bust your ass, so you know I'm not. I might not be <laughs> yeah, the greatest of state, but <laughs> but I'm in there. You know what I mean. So I'm looking forward to uh, the official season starting. Um, you know, like I said, getting creative with lineups. I got a lineup where it kind of reminds me of the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves or a old school San Antonio Spurs, where I'm starting two damn near a six nine and a six eleven. So it's like Timmy D and and Ooh, and, and Robinson shit. or Cat Cat and Goldberg in Minnesota. So the inside presence okay. is there. Um, you know, some I'm strat- I'm trying to figure it out as I go as well. Right, every day I'm talking with the rest of the coaches and just always trying to figure things out. Um, we had some individual meetings where, you know, we talked about kids' strengths and weaknesses, what they believe, their goals for this season. So it's been fun, bro, just really embracing the whole whole journey um, and giving it my all, bro. You know, I'm never going to do, especially when it comes to hoop, I'm going to be two feet in. So everything that I'm doing, the time that I'm putting forth with the kids, my mind is always working on, you know, how can we get this guy shot or how can we maximize this player's potential or put him in the best situations possible. It's, the wheels are always spinning. So it's been fun. So, again, we, tournament this weekend, three games, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. And, um, you know, hopefully we can come out 3-0, and get a great start to the season going. Oh, shit, you got six, six, eleven, six, nine back there. That means those guards could really press up, take some risk. Yeah, I mean, put a lot of pressure on the ball because you got shit. I don't know what it's like in, you know, in Canada as far as, you know, height and with teams like that, but you don't see a lot of six, nine, six, eleven kids, you know, teaming up. So, shit, that. I'm, my guards is on you. Shit. Yeah, I'm letting yeah, go. That's what I keep you know trying to preach. That's what I tell them. I say, you know, when we watch film, it's crazy. Breaking down film, that's another thing, bro. Watching one half of basketball when you're really trying to break it down. You could really break down every dribble if you wanted to, right? But it's so you got to pick and choose what you want to really dissect. The first time I did it, you know, we only played two games. I did it for the first game. It took me about two hours to watch just one half. You know what I mean? 
So I was really pausing, writing the notes down. So that's, even that's fun. That aspect, just learning how to do that, breaking video down and giving it, you know, time stamps. I need this at two seventeen, eleven forty four. I need that clip as well. You know, so it's been it's been fun. But um, I'm enjoying that's it. The real shit. I'm definitely enjoying it. But that, but that's what I'm telling the kids is the guards. We got to press up. You got to funnel the the. You got to funnel them to the bigs. You don't get worried about getting beat because we already should be in the gap. But if they break that line of defense where they break you down, they get past the gap, and they get to the, to the basket. We got 6'9", six, 6'11", six, really 7 feet for real down there waiting for you. So um, it's a matter of my bigs trying to figure out, you know, what when to block a shot and when to just be there and intimidate or contest without following the chance straight up. Yeah. It alter shots, you know, they got the, you know, shout out to my guy, Jesse Edwards, but, you know, he was following like a motherfucker last season. So I'm trying to, you know, get them <laughs> to know, like, you, we need you in the game. That's the, that's what it reminds me of. I keep trying to tell our bigs, like, we need you in the game. because So you guys got to really pick and choose. Like, just be there. You're seven feet. You don't really got to do too much. You know what I mean? You know, you know, if he finishes over you one time, that's cool. We'll take that. But he won't do that all game. You know what I mean? So it's been fun teaching these kids and, um, and getting them ready for a for a grueling season, 50, 55 games. Damn, that's shit. I remember um, Oak Hill, the most games we played was like 36, so 55. God damn, you, you, you goddamn uh, the NBA schedule damn near shit, playing right. like that. No question. You know, you know, what's, that's what's good for NBA, I mean, but, it, 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 Does that mean less reps. practices for you guys, though? Yeah, it will be because we'll be on the road. And then, of course, that's like I tough. said, we're already seven to eight kids um, until probably December. So, again, the word that we – the two words that we hate to hear is load management. But yeah. we're going to really have to manage the load of the work that we're going to have to put in because, you know, you, you can't practice. We can't have three games in a week and still try to find time to really practice. It'll be more reviews, making sure guys are getting, like, active um, – you know, not active therapy, but active recovery, rather. You know, getting active the gym, recovery, yeah. You know, just, you know, come in there, stretch a little bit, get moving, maybe get some shots up 30, 40 minutes, in the, 45 minutes, get in, get out, uh, run through the play, just so that at least that's sharp. This has got to stay sharp. So, um, you know, because they could easily forget. You know what I mean? We've been running plays for a month, and it's still not sticking just because they haven't been used to running plays and just really dissecting all the options within a play. Every play yeah. that I run has a – everybody could score. Everybody has a chance to score in the offense that we run. It's just, it's about knowing if this gets cut off, we got this available. If that's cut off, the big's available. If that's cut off, we got the swing and the four could play on the other side with the, you know, handoff or pass, pick and pop, whatever it may be. So now it's about figuring out all the options within the offense. You know what I mean? So that's been, that's been fun. But like I said, bro, coaching is not something that I believed I would ever do. But it's something that I'm really enjoying and I'm really loving. And, I'm, you know, the kids are – when we had these individual meetings, they were saying that, you know, it's it's much better than last year in the sense where the offense runs a lot smoother. It's more clear what everybody's supposed to do. Roles were kind of not given but given at the same time. So everybody knows what they're supposed to do within the offense. You know, it's about more sort of patience and holding your corner, you know, not That's trying important. to – Things of that nature. Yeah. You know, so it's been That's fun. That's important. Seeing you e I seen you, I seen your team, you know, E D twenty three hoops. Uh they went and they had a few games, man. So how did it how did it turn out? Yeah, so they the boys teams they went over to New Haven, Connecticut this weekend. Um and, and again, like the guys who we have on our teams, they're still learning really how to play. You know what I mean? I, from the time that I saw them when they signed up in the beginning of August to now, I could just tell uh, you know the confidence in, in, in the difference in their games. You're not you're not going to go head and shoulders, right? But you, you can just tell yeah. by their body control, their IQ, learning learning to read different types of situations, and and going back to like what you said, your offense has different options. It's up to these these guys once they rep it out to make the reads in the game, right? And that and that's hard because you only get one two seconds to make a read. So yeah, um, it, it's me just seeing these kids being able to make those. You know, even if it's uh, a easy one, whether it's a guy closing out, he pump fake going by. Like oh, those yeah, are no those doubt. are the things that these kids are are developing. So we actually are are, are thirteen and fifteen. Yeah, bring her on. Our thirteen and um and fifteen you went to the championship game, they lost. Um our twelve you ended up winning the game. What's up, B? What's, What's going, going on? on? 
What's going on? So B B coming all the way from uh from Hungary, B. Yeah. Right? You in Hungary? Yeah. Yeah, I just got back to the crib. I had to uh, go get my permit. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that. your permit. What out there for driving? Nah, permit to live here. <laughs> oh, permit. So like a visa. Whole, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you here longer process. than three months. Yeah, you long ahead in three months. You got to have a work permit. So I had to like go out an hour to Gore. Gore, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but uh, <laughs> I had to go out there. It's pretty pretty though. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to make that make that drive a couple times. <laughs> Yo, so look, so for for everybody tuned in and, and watching, if you don't know who Brittany Sykes is, first of all, you're dead wrong. All right, but but B was uh she was at Q's for five years, All American. Uh, third time, I think the third leading scorer uh, in Q's women's history, but the number one winningest player in Q's women's history with 101 wins. So, a hey, B special, man. She's a McDonald's All-American, and she held that going all the way to Q's, and now she's in the WNBA um, doing big things and overseas as well. So, B, we appreciate you hopping on, man. This time. Most definitely. Of course, man. I already told you I'll be feeling now I'm on the show. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm with some caliber. Yeah, I was waiting for this moment. <laughs> Yo, tell tell us about uh just about your season this year in LA. Uh, we'll we'll get back to like you know your rookie year and all that, but just tell us about yeah. LA this year, how that was, and then fuck you right after that season, you hopping on the plane going right overseas. Yeah, I mean, shoot, this season, I'm not gonna lie, to you, this season was one of those seasons where I really had to like bet on myself. Like we was losing and it wasn't even like, it's, you lose, like you lose some, you win some. Right. But it was like how we was losing, you know? And I kind of, and I even kind of, I took it personal because if I'm saying that I want to be this defensive player of the year, I want to be this two way player. I want the respect. You know what I mean? I had to really dig deep and, going to that, that character almost, you know, like I, I was so worried about not making people upset and not stepping on toes and, you know, making sure that everybody in a sense eats and you could still do that, but there's a thin line between having to make sure you go do what you got to do because of the player that you are. And then like, not, not caring. So I feel like this season for me was one of those seasons where I had to really be numb to others feelings out of respect mm -hmm. for the fact that I'm trying to get somewhere, you know, like I had to realize that the type of player I am, the type of person I am, I know that what I'm doing is not for selfish gain. Like at the end of the day, all I want to do is win. So if I do my job and I do it the way I'm supposed to do, caring about other people's feelings, caring about how people would, would, would judge my character, the right people will know what I'm trying to do. So that's all that mattered to me at that point. So it's like that last month, if you look at my numbers, the last month in August, I just went unconscious. Like I didn't care anymore. I just, I just, I just wanted to, you feel me? I just wanted to win and I wanted to do my numbers and do my numbers is not even like, Oh, I wanted 20 plus. I wanted this amount of rebounds. It was more about the fact of like, if we keep it in the book, free agency is for me next year. So, you know what I mean? Like yeah, if we yeah. want to be really real, <laughs> if we want to be really real about it, you know, and like keep it a hundred, my free agency was next. And teams, they ain't going to look at potential. They're going to look at what you did. So, no for, you know what I mean? So, it's like for my last year, that the last business. month, I, I, exactly, I really had to show them, like, hey, this amount of money I want, y'all paying for this. I know what I'm worth. So, when I go to the table, I can just lay that shit right out there and be like, hey, look, this is what I did. This is what I'm trying to do. What can you do for me at this point? Because I done, I done proved up to this point what I'm worth. And I know that I'm still putting in work because overseas is just as important. So it's like, all right, I'm with Show Prime, which is a top team. They just won EuroLeague. And we had a mutual understanding of I want to be there and they want me to be here. So it's like, it's game time now. Uh, so it's yeah. like you come out of that season and I go straight to Hungary and, and, and they come out here and we sit down the first meeting. And they're like, look, this is what we need from you. This is what we want from you. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm running back to them. This is what I want from y'all. This is what I need yeah. from y'all. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mutual understanding ain't no confusion because I feel like once you get past your fifth year that's when you kind of should start finding your voice it took me to my sixth but I even tweeted mm -hmm. it like I'm at the point where I'm not being quiet about what I want because I know the work that I put in 
So it was like, that's where, exactly. that's where I'm literally am in my career. It's like, man, I don't know what y'all want to talk about, but this is what I want. Like, this is what I know I'm gonna give y'all, but this is what I want. This is what I'm gonna need if y'all want me to be there. Hey, that's and big now, though. People need to start like, doing that, though. Exactly. Fault, but exactly. I was just saying, more people need to be able to do that, especially overseas, because exactly. you have an experience. All three of us have an experience overseas. We know it can get kind of funky, right? So mm-hmm. going in there and really setting it, setting it straight and, and, you know, being real transparent with what you need, what you want is super important. And a lot of people don't want to do that overseas, to be honest with you, because now they might look at you as, oh, this person, this, you know, this American or this foreigner thinks that mm-hmm. so and so they can come in and say whatever right but it, that's what it is it's a business all the way around whether you in the nba wnba overseas it's a business you know what i mean and for it to work we all have to be on the same page mm-hmm. you, you gotta, gotta use your voice honest. You, you, you got to. You, it more, I think more more players are doing it now. You see with, like, you know, the higher-up players, LeBron and um, and the WNBA, like Deanna, uh, Deanna Taurasi and, and, and Super. Like, they're using their voices, like, on other, uh, other areas <laughs> besides sports. But even, like, in the sport, like you said, be like – you're the one playing for this team, right? You're, they want you to play mm-hmm. for them. Like, you, this is what you need. Like, even early on in my career, I think, like, we shied away from doing that. Like, saying, hey, I need this, I need – you ain't about to have me living on a cot and then going to practice, coming back with sleep. You know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> using your time. voice early yeah, talk. Like, in your career. <laughs> yeah, for, for, young, for young players, that's important. Like, to, to get in the habit of stating how you feel and what you need to – Shit, make you feel good. If you don't feel good, you ain't going to play good. You know what I'm saying? It, it's hard to do Man. all that, especially when you overseas, B. What, what's the difference for you, like, the biggest difference basketball-wise, like, from, from over here to overseas? I mean, just with just with show prime, period, or just, like, overseas versus just, like, back in the States? Yeah, yeah, just the, the ball when you in the WNBA to when you go overseas and play, yeah. Well, like we all know the biggest difference is it's like you you can be more of yourself overseas, whereas in the league, you kind of, you know, can get mixed into being a systematic player because you got to follow the flow of five Mm -hmm. other all stars. You could be on the team with five other superstars, whereas you go overseas, it's probably one or two of you. And it's most likely a guard and it's a post. So you could get boogie and really do your, do your thing overseas and kind of keep your confidence and like kind of keep your sense of self. Whereas when you go to the league, I've seen a lot of players lose themselves because they're so used to being the star that they don't mm-hmm. know how to turn into a team player. So that's kind of like the thin line you dance with when you, when you, when you put the verses between like a, a player in the league versus a player overseas. Because some players overseas, they know themselves, which I respect. They don't touch the league because they're like, I don't want that. I want mine. Go ahead. Do you. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's not for everybody, you know? And, I mean, for some players, they come overseas because they just need to make bread consistently. It's not even the fact that they yeah. want to keep playing. A lot of these players overseas don't even want to come over here because it's a different lifestyle. Like, you are in somebody else's home for eight months out of the year. Yeah. You driving a stick shift. You trying to learn the different language. Nobody really talking to you. And the biggest thing, and, like, people don't even realize, like, like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a physical touch person, right? So it's like I love my loved ones. I love to dap my, my mans up, give my, my people's hugs. You don't do that over here. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, you got to know how to be with yourself because <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't get that. Like, you, 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 you think it's cool, but at the end of the day, it's a business. So if somebody see you doing something better than them, sometimes it gets a little funky. You get hurt, you might be out the door. Whereas yeah. in the league, you get hurt, they have to take care of you. Whereas here, yeah. it's like, yeah, we can take care of you, but it's like, shoot, we're trying to get the next best thing. We're going to give you money. Here we go. Let me, next, let me wipe, you, next, let me, let me wipe my hands. Yeah. Let me get the next best thing. Like, it's like a draft all over again. <laughs> so, yeah. like, that, that's, like, the biggest thing that I, when I first got over here, because it didn't happen to me personally, but I've seen it <laughs> happen to other players, which put me up on my game when I first got over here, because it's like, oh, that's how y'all rocking? Okay. <laughs> I got to yeah, make sure I'm I, I like, my stuff. I like that you you touched on just just the word injury. Getting hurt overseas is probably the 
worst thing to happen to a player. But then also the facilities might not be up to par, even, you know, with a, mm-hmm. with a NCAA team, right? So you go, it might be, I remember being in places where it wasn't my assistant coach that was taping ankles. You know what I mean? Like, do you, are you certified <laughs> in this, sir? You know what I mean? Like, do you got some type of certification? So it's been times where that happens. And I remember spraining my ankle. It ended up being a, a, a fracture in, in Italy, and I, I barely could walk. And the GM brings me into the office. He's like, well, Chris, what do you want to do? Because I'm like, well, damn, bro. Like, I just, it's been a week. My ankle's still, I still can't walk. But you considering, like, shipping me out instead of taking care of me. And I'm supposed to be here for for, for 10 months. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, right. it's, it's different out there. Real cutthroat. Real cutthroat. B, you got a you got a horror story overseas? Like, uh, all the places you've been, like, has it been like a, or has it been pretty good to you? I'm trying to think. What's a horror story? I don't think I really or, had, or you know, like, like a fucked up, like a fucked up situation or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think every experience that when we go overseas is is pretty cool because it's some different yeah. shit. You know what I mean? But it, you do get put in some shit where you like, God damn, motherfucker! I ain't got no Wi-Fi or no motherfucking. <laughs> Man, all right. So, all right, look, you you talk about Wi-Fi. Right? I'm gonna talk about the, the time, like, so you know, contracts and like wording and you know, honoring and as an overseas player, you wait for that one time that they like, they mess up in the contract because then yep. I mean, I could go home and you got to pay me, right? Yep. So <laughs> it, was my, it was my rookie year overseas. I was in uh, Ankara, uh, Turkey. I was playing for Ormond Sport. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not even really like a effed up story, but it's more so just funny because of how like some teams move. So uh, in my contract, it says that I'm allotted a car. Where I get an apartment, I get a car, like I get my, you know, one bedroom, da da da. So the team at the time, they had a, a bus for us that would come pick us up from the apartments, take us to practice, you know, to and from. I'm an independent kid, you feel me? Like, I, I don't wanna ride no bus. I wanna be able to bus and move when I need to. If I wanna go to the store, I don't wanna wait for nobody, nobody wait for me. So I right. go to my agent and I'm like, hey, in my country, it said I got a car. Like, tell them that I want my car. So I go to the office. They like, oh yeah, uh, we see that the contract, you know, but we don't give people cars. I said, I hear that, but it's in my contract. So if y'all want to violate that, right. I'm up out of here. Y'all got to pay me the whole <laughs> smorgasbord. board. So they like, all right, all right, all right, all right. So he goes, okay, you want an automatic car? I'm like, yeah. Do you know these cats got me a stick shift? I ain't know how to drive nobody's oh, sure. stick shift. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's, the, here's the funny part. They put the car in the team parking lot and they like, all right, we got you a car. We got you your automatic car. I'm hyped. I done walked outside. I get in the car. I see the stick. I'm like, hey, yo, what's this? Like, <laughs> so, shout out, shout out to the Figure it out. Like, they like, figure it out. So they like, we don't see if you really want to drive. They, they literally was like, we're going to see if you want to drive. So it, it was a, it was an all white Volkswagen. I'll never forget. And where we lived, the parking lot had like four hills. So it was, oh, like, like four, it was like four rows and you, you could drive up the hills, drive down the hills, right? And you, that's the worst part about driving stick is you got to master driving on a hill. So yeah. shout out to my teammates, Petra and Lutza. They was our two post players. They was our two foreign players, right? And they was like, oh, you don't know how to drive stick? I said, nah, teach me. He was like, for real? I'm like, yeah, ain't no way they about to hold me and think that they about to get over and not give me an automatic. I'm about to exactly. show them. Like, you I'm figure that shit out. It. Fuck that. I'm figuring I'm it out. Figure that shit out. Well, I'm telling you, yeah. no lie, y'all. 48 hours later, I'm stalling out on the highway, but I'm getting it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and I'm pulling up with a And I'm, I'm, yo, and I'm then pulling I got up with a Yo, when I tell you I used to park in the back, I used to take one of the president's spot on purpose for a week straight because of what they did. Like, I'm talking about, like, you can hear me coming in the freaking parking lot. Like, I'm thumping music, like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm just pulling in. I don't reverse back everything. Like, I'm one-handed and all that. So I was like, man. And then literally when I got out here, this is probably the next, the, when I got here, it was probably the, the first time I drove a stick <laughs> since I learned. And I, it's literally just muscle memory. So yep. I was like, man, honestly, I turned that into a new lesson. I'm like, my pops was supposed to teach me, but he was the first person I called. I'm like, yo, dad, you ain't even got to teach me how to drive stick no more. Like, I done learned by accident. <laughs> right. Damn. I, I still don't know how. I still, but I don't know fun. how to drive stick. It's fun. 
it is fun. Yeah, yeah. It keeps you it's alert, alert too, like because you got to keep exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'll tell, tell you what. I'll tell you what fucked me up. What, what, what fucked me up was the first time I go overseas, I go to New Zealand. And then and in Australia, we driving on the other side of the road. So that motherfucker on the Ooh. what side? It's on the other side. So you're you're um, it's a short left and a long right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, oh, I but know, you know me, I don't turn, turn, turn down a couple of streets. Oh yeah. I, so my my first time, I'm in shit in Melbourne. I'm in Melbourne. That's a big ass city. So they just I'm just in it automatically. No. So I'm just thinking in my head, all right, bet everything opposite, everything opposite, man. I, a couple of times I had it on the wrong side of the road at night. Police, hey sir, I said, man, look, I, just to be honest, it's fucking me up driving on the other side. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm not, I, I haven't been drinking or anything. You know what I'm saying? It was just, but it took me a little bit, and then the, that was the first time I was introduced to like roundabouts for real, because we ain't have them like that. I, they popping up around here now, but. We ain't have them like that. So that was that was kind no. of my Round first. Roundabouts is tricky with the stick shift. I'm not going to hold you because people don't really know how to drive. So then you be stalling out or you got to go into neutral real quick. But that that's driving in Australia. I'm not going to lie. When I got back to the States, for one, I kept going to the American side for my car the first couple months I was there. And then when I got back mm-hmm. to the States, I'm not going to lie, I was a little shift to drive because when I got back, I'm like, oh shit, do I, do, what side of the road do I turn on? Like, I'm literally in the middle of driving. I'm like, yo, what side do I drive? I'm like, Lord, please. Because in Australia now, they got to keep left. They don't got to keep right in the States. It's you on your own. So when I got back, I'm like, damn, all right, all right, we can turn on right. We can turn on right. That's all I kept telling myself, like, turn on right, turn on right. No, that's a fact. When you come back, that's fu- that's a fact overseas. Yo, B, what, what you think about, um, and we talked about it uh, when, when I had you on the podcast a few days ago, but the, the state of the women's program now with, uh, you know, Coach Felice, Felicia Legat jack being there, it just mm-hmm. feels like, and we had her on not too long ago, me and Chris Joe, and her Great. energy, yo, is just yeah, like amazing. on a whole nother level. So, it, it, like, I don't care. I told Joe, I said, I don't care who she got on her team right now. It, it, whoever she do got on her team going to play hard as shit because that's what type yep. of, like, she made me want to go hoop. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, just, no I don't know if you know her personally, but but kind of, yeah, like, no. talk about the state of the program and, and where it's going from here. I, honestly, like, I'm just really proud of Q's for finally, like, bringing back an alum. Like, if they was going to bring somebody, I'm happy that it was an alum, and then I'm extremely happy that it was her, you know, because mm-hmm. you, you kind of keep it in, you keep it in house. Like, you, you keep it home. Like, you don't really go outside of that, which means that she know the tradition, she could build a new tradition, and then, like you said, she's a player's coach off the bat, yep. and yep. she came around a lot when I was in school um, they would come to the games. They was they was riding with us when we was in the first round. They was riding with us when we was in the national championship. So it wasn't like that she came around when we was doing good. She came around when we was, you know, on the up and coming too. And she would talk to us like, and she would just, you know, give us encouragement, but just the type of person she is. And I, you know, she pulled up on me in New York. That was, that was probably, man, mm-hmm. when I tell That's you dope. that felt so, so good to like see my school Especially because, like, we talked about it, E, I'm the only one in the league, you know, like, that's repping Cuse. So being the Lone Ranger, yeah, man, like, being the Lone Ranger and seeing my squad, seeing my coach there, they all pulled up from Syracuse. They driving three, four hours down. It's a 7 o'clock game. I I really appreciated that. Like, shout out to my manager because my manager contacted them and, like, worked that out because – it's crazy to say, but when I was at Q's, I spoke about it today with one of my teammates. I never had a homecoming. Like, in my five years there, I never had a, a, a game in New Jersey. So, uh-huh. New York is, like, the closest thing to home for me, to where my mom, my grandma, mm-hmm. my pops, like, my best friends, my homies, people I went to school with. Like, er- New York is that home base for me. So, to have Q's pull up, and she was all for it, and she's talking to them, and just to, you know, like, be that example – for her to, to, you know, show the girls, like, hey, look, this is where I'm trying to get y'all. This is where you want to go. Like, one of the girls, I want to say her name is Daisy. <laughs> she, uh, she hit me up. She And, like, I'm, I'm supposed to be yeah. talking to her um, in a couple of days. But 
like that was just dope to have that that opportunity where she introduced us and she's just that type of person you could tell where she wants to pay it forward and i'm all about that so it was like to have her in that position and to have her have those girls and get them prepared for the real world like it's it's a it's, it's dope like i'm i am more than happy and it, it got me wanting to go back to cuse so like i gotta find a time but it's like shit. I yeah. want to get back up there, so I can, you know, I can see it in person. I want to, I want to be like KD at Texas. I'm trying to be in practice. Like she, she ain't even coach you, so that that just shows like what type of person she is right there. Like she, her whole four years, she, you know, Q was your coach. So for her to go be like, man, I gotta. She went to Q's that's family, regardless of our coach. Or not, mm -hmm. That says a lot about her, man, yeah. doing that. Yeah, you know what she was talking about was just that tradition where it, it, that's what it needs to come back to. You know, when we were in school, E D C yeah. would come back. Billy Owens, like everybody used to come back, and you know they would be at the garden when we played. That's how it should be for the whole program. Just everybody got to be connected. You know what I mean? I'm still kind of fucked up over the fact you know you a lone ranger out there. I didn't know it was you, you were the only one. Kayla, so when I got drafted, Kayla oh, yeah, so was in the Kayla. Room still. Kayla, Kayla was Kayla, Kayla Alexander, opened yeah. up. Kayla, Kayla opened the floodgates for, you feel me? Like, she opened the floodgates for us. Mm -hmm. She was she went eighth. I went seventh. Butler, Butler went, uh, first, well, she went first. She, Butler went first or second round? I think she went, I think she went. Did, did, did uh, Alexis get drafted too? Alexis went second round. Um, <clears throat> so it's not like we, we were in there at one point, but now it's yeah. only me. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it was, was in there. So like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to get twisted. Like, oh, I was the only one. No, 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 no. Kayla was in no. there, Butler was in there. You know what I mean? Like, we had some kids yeah. in there, but it also shows you how but hard today, it is to stay in there. Oh, yeah. But, you know what I mean? So oh, yeah, right. today, for me to be the only one since 2017, 2018, like, I take that shit to heart because you see all yeah. these Dukes, you see all these Maryland's, you see all these Yukons, these Notre Dames, they swarming yeah. inside that mode. You feel me? <laughs> and then you just got cute. Like every time, you know, they, they say the name, they be like, Brady Sykes, number 15 from Syracuse. And I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they, they try to dog, you know, they try to talk trash. And I'm like, nah, man, look, you remember and everybody else remember how cute you Facts. dog all oh, y'all. This is ain't in this this league like that. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, we gave a lot of people hell and still do. That's why I want more cues in mm -hmm. here. Cause then it's like I want to be able to pop my shit with with you know with the game. Yeah. Everybody be throwing no each other up like, oh yeah, duke, duke, duke. And you know, like all respect. <laughs> all respect to the North Carolinas and all them. But it's like, nah, it hit a little different when you got, you know, feel me, coming from upstate New York. Cause People don't really know where yep. Syracuse is. They just know it's in New York. They think it's in the city. I'm That's like, it. no. <laughs> it's in the city. Motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> in the city saying upstate. They think it's Westchester or some shit. Man, or, or freaking, uh, what is it, like Rochester and stuff. I'm like, come on, bro. Yep. Now y'all trying it. Y'all trying it. No, yep. man. Yep. Upstate New York, man. Not fucking upstate from Harlem or some shit. Like, like yo, who, B, you got two dookies on your team, right? Who is it this year? Did you? I had Lex, but I don't know. Do we count like transfers as? Because I mean, she went to Duke, so Chelsea, Chelsea Gray, you know, went to Duke. Um, but she, okay. she, uh, you know, just got her chip with Vegas. Shout out to Chelsea Gray, point yeah. God. Yeah. And then, tough. Um, man, tough to guard too. Because let me tell you, she put that back on me, and I just be like, <laughs> I see it. She got big shoulders. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, I stay in front of her, but, like, she uses her body very well. Like, that's one of those point guards where it don't even matter that she back you down because she got eyes in the back of her head. So it's like, I'm thinking, like, oh, my length got her. Man, nah, I got to actually do some things with her to, like, make her mm -hmm. pick the ball up. But her, yeah. Le Lexi Brown went to Duke. Um, she also went to Maryland. Who else was on Duke? Oh, Elena Beard went to Duke. She went to Duke. She was Ooh. on the Sparks before I got the there. Older, she older, older, huh? Duke. Yeah, no, yeah. she retired, like, what, like, three, two, like, three, four, three, four years ago? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But, Talk yeah, about man, just being, right yeah. oh, my fault, my fault, B. The, 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 like, the approach that you got to take every year when you're playing, right? So you're in the WNBA, it's the top of the top. That's the best league for women in the world, right? So um, yeah. what is it every year that you got to do to separate yourself and to stay relevant you know what I mean? Because it's always like like anywhere else. There's a young crop, a new, young, fresh talent that comes in every year. Mm -hmm. So how is it that you do to lock in and make sure that you stay relevant and 
and do what you got to do to keep your, your career going? I think for me, it's like, it's two things, right? That like immediately come to mind. One, I never want to stop learning. Like never. Cause it's just, it's always some shit you can learn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I pick my OG's head. Uh, I had Christy Tolliver as a teammate. And when I say like, I hung out with her so damn much, like we started golfing together. I would just pick her brain. We would talk about the most randomest things, but you know, that's what you got to do in order to learn. Like she's in her 15th year. Yep. I'm talking to somebody who, fig you know, who's figured out how to stay relevant and stay in the league yes. for a umpteen amount of years. So why not share that company? You know, birds of a feather. Hell, I'm staying with somebody mm -hmm. that's been in for 15 years. That might be for me. And then the, the second thing is uh, paying it forward. So when these kids come in the league, I'm trying to be a me that I didn't have. Like all the things that I, I learned the hard way or I had to yeah. learn on my own, I try to be that vet now to the younger ones because no lie, like these kids are coming in with – some shit to them and it ain't even about basketball anymore like we they got the what is it nil deals and all that so now yep. me he was talking about it before where we have to figure out a way to keep these these kids that's coming in hungry to want to be better as a basketball player and as a person because it's going right. to turn into just money like they yep. making 150 250 damn near a million off of just deals alone why would they care to go put up extra shots unless they really want it Right, right, yeah, right. You gotta love so, it. Like, they're already getting money. You gotta really love it. So it's like I try to talk to the ones where you know they want it. I don't really waste my time, and I'm just being honest. Like I can tell from the jump if you gonna waste my time or not. I'll give you a chance, but you got so many times to you know what I mean. Like for sure, brush it off or, or not listen because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the dead horse. I can lead you to water, but yeah. I can't make you drink. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that, that's, that's my, that's my saying. Like, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you the things that, you know what I mean? Help me out. And I'm going to give you the things that I learned from OGs in the past and some things that I learned on my own. But if you're not willing to listen or take <laughs> heed to it, or at least respect the fact that I'm giving you that time, then I'm out, you know, it's like you on your yeah. own. So, you know, it's like, I wish you nothing but the best. I wish you nothing but good luck, but I've, I've been in, I've been in, positions where even this past season where a couple of people got cut and it was because they figured it out too late. Like they literally figured yeah. it out too late. They just, they just started to figure it out. I'm playing ones yeah. with, with somebody who got cut and I'm like, I'm trying to catch them, but then they just would not listen. Like it was the yeah. littlest things. Like they telling you come off the L cut, pop out to the wing, grab the ball, rip it two dribble, pull up. You doing one dribble pull ups. Like, bro, that that literally is gonna give the coach the easiest way to cut you because somebody yeah. else did a L cut to the <laughs> to the wing, grab, rip, two dribble pull up. Like, you don't do that, then you out of here. Like that's literally what it comes yeah. down to now. Can they listen? Can they can they absorb the information and can they produce in a manner of where, okay, it might be some potential, but also it's like, okay, I see you want it. It's about the want yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yo, I'm gonna rewind back a little bit. Talk about the NIL thing. I don't know if y'all saw. Um, and shout out to Adam Weissman, what, what he's doing up at Q's for. I think it's four basketball players and one mm -hmm. football player, all five star, giving them a million each if they come to the Q's. Uh, to and then he's gonna represent his country. So we talking about. We we're just talking about how hard it is. You come like, on. You said you, you said he gonna give. This is for incoming incoming. Uh, so five star on, recruit. I'm about to find it. I'm about to five find it. Hold on, because so pick, I just saw it's it. It's one football and four basketball. You got to be a five star, and if you come to Q's, he'll give you a million dollars to represent his company. Oh, well, sorry, sorry. One football, one basketball. I said four. Sorry. Thanks for the correction, Jordan. Because <laughs> that's you uh, dropping five million. million. Yeah, five million. Yeah, damn. Hold on, shit. Let me but try two to uh, million, you the hands of time. Yeah, two million. So okay, that that that's that's, that's, that's attractive. That's attractive. <laughs> like, is that I mean, attractive? Let alone is cute, and then you getting a mill right. on top of that. Right. Let that happen. Man, hold on, man. You, you make it more than the coach. <laughs> <laughs> you you make it more than the coaches. You know what I'm saying? All the assistants. <laughs> Like, nah, bro, you tell me. offer me a meal to come to the, the frozen tundra? Hell yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> Man, let's cancel the rest of those business. 
Cancel the Antarctica. rest of the visits. I'm cool. I'm going to Q's. Yeah, hey, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, guys, the best part wow. is legally due to what NIL is. Uh, it's written that they technically don't have to attend Syracuse if they're chosen legally. That's a fun little uh, way of covering yourself. So how does that work then? So how does that work? You talking about you just doing classes online? Well, man, listen. Oh, you know how it works. They're going to Q's. Yeah, but I'm saying, but how, but how hard is that? Like for some, like to be able to coach that. Right. And, and when so we just talked about it, you're getting paid in all the coach more than all the coaches, except for one, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you, you still gotta go to practice. The, everybody who, on campus know you got that meal. Cause you're going to be mm -hmm. the only one, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you're going to be one football, mm -hmm. one back. Like that shit hard to deal with, not only for yourself, but like as a coach trying to coach you. Because if I miss practice, man, fuck all. It got to be like stipulations or something. Like if you miss practice, you get. But I again, mean, like it, what's going on? It come, it come down to what B said. You got to love it at that point. You still got goals Facts. and aspirations. You go to school. You trying to get to the league. You trying to get to the NFL. Whatever mm -hmm. it is. So at the end of the day, you still got to want to get better. The money is cool. No, no question. You might not be in a rush to leave after one year because you got a mill. You know what I'm saying? You're cool. Yeah, right. but. At the end of the day, you still got a, you still got certain dreams and aspirations you had as a kid to get you to this point to want to make the lead. But then at that point, I know it's easier said than done. But you see that 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 mills like eh, extra shots. Like I'll be straight. I'll be. I don't know. But I figure you still got yeah. dreams. You still want to make it to the league, and you're gonna put the work in. You know to get there. I ain't gonna hold you, shit man. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. It was it was hard going to class without a mill. Imagine with a mill. Man, I don't listen. Know come back to this. <laughs> Man, come on, man. For real, though. That's, that's, but on the other hand, it could be motivation to go ahead. Like, shit, I got this bag already. Let me go ahead and get some more. You know what I mean? It depends on the kid, yeah, sure. right? Yeah, it, it, it really depends on the kid. But okay, shit, I know it, it, I'm good. Yeah, like the um, there was this conversation I had with my trainer, um, Dash. Uh, he, he's our he's like our player development coach in in the Sparks, and we were talking about like working out and um. It, the conversation came about, we, he made a joke. He was like, man, Britt, you lazy. And I'm like, it's not that I'm lazy. It's just that my focus wasn't on offensive game. Like we were talking about last year. Like he wanted me to get mm -hmm. in the gym and like do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get deep point. F all that offensive shit. Like I know mm -hmm. I got it in my bag. It's just, that's not what I'm on right no now. Question. So we got into the conversation of what is your motivation? People are going to work out as much as their motivation leads them to it. So when we get to the million, it's like, is money your motivation or is right. getting better your motivation or is getting to the league your motivation? Because it could be all the above. But for most kids nowadays, it's just about the bag. It's about the Cubans. It's about the Rollies. It's, 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 yeah, it's right. very much a, a synonymous field between rap life and like yeah. basketball life. Because everybody wants to cross those, <laughs> everybody want to cross those paths. It's so synonymous. The shit is sickening sometimes yeah. because you see, like I've never imagined or like fathom seeing like these kids now that are in high school with freaking iced out Audemars and freaking like. It's crazy. I'm like how? How? I mean, you're a walking target. Don't get me wrong, but it's like no. how? Yeah, that's it. Like are you in college, like people see that now. That's why I was like, it gets kind of tricky when it comes to this money thing. It does. Because now you got people on your taco because they know, okay, they got a bag. Now you gotta deal with all the other I mean, we could all say, like, we've all been in positions where it's like, okay, we've 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 gone to a, a level in our in our careers where we start to question people's sincerity and how much they bang with us. Now these yeah. kids gotta deal with that times a thousand. Or two thousand yeah. because hella money is involved. You don't know who really got your back or who really is in your corner because of everything that comes with you. And it's like, shoot, I'm I'm over here stressing about who really with me right now. And yeah, right. like these kids gotta deal with that starting at fifteen and up. Like that's really hey, crazy. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. They they might need if 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 that five star crew go to Q, he might need he might need security. You feel me? No, for real though. <laughs> <laughs> he not just going to the mall freely. Like is 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 that's the reality of it. Like we're not because motherfuckers will you know. know that shit will be on ESPN, oh, yeah. Fox Sports, motherfucking overseas sports, Syracuse uh, .com, uh yeah, everything, yeah. Daily Orange, everything, all, everything. Syracuse. If people don't know, Syracuse mm -hmm. is down the block from the hood. 
So you yeah. think that all these cats don't know, like if we really being straight, the dome is right around the corner from the hood. Mellow is oh, down right the street down. from East Salina. Like <laughs> we know, <laughs> we yeah. know. Like that's it's not some place you just walk around freely with ice on like that. And 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 even though Cuse is a closed campus, it's still open to the public. Like oh, no question. people can walk on and off the campus every day. People do tailgates in our parking lot all the time. Like yep. you really got to have some shine parties with a couple that. people from the town. Yeah, you don't need it. They be in the, they, 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 I seen, man, what, how you get on South Campus? Yeah, it's easy. They just, you know what I mean? They was South Walk House right parties. <laughs> <laughs> that shit don't, that, I mean, yeah, what you going to do? The gate ain't doing shit. Uh, the gate right ain't doing shit. Right around that hole. Especially UVs, that yeah. shit always broke. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Always, always, man, always. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, you brought up uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Going in and having to guard the best wings in the in the league, how was that for you? What's the mental preparation for you just going in and saying, look, I got to guard so-and-so tonight? Like, what's your preparation? I know for every player it's different. You got to guard a certain – but you got to know them. You got to study that offensive player to know their tendencies and mm-hmm. how much thought and work do you put into dissecting someone's game to know how to stop them? Um, let me see how to put this. It's like <laughs> – <laughs> how can how can I humbly put this? Like uh it's more so I take the mindset of them them motherfuckers gotta prepare for me. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like it's like I know I'm gonna do the work, I'm gonna do the homework, I'm gonna look at film, I'm gonna look at your tendencies, I'm gonna probably find your two go to moves. I'm either bait mm-hmm. into doing them or I'm gonna count how you know, I'm I'm doing all that. And and shout out to Coach Tram Tramel. She was my defensive coach. She's the one who kind of kickstarted this whole defensive fucking montage that I'm on. Like, for me, my motto was once I decided, like, I'm going to be, like, the best freaking two-way player ever, like, I swear to you, to this day, you will need a freaking screen to get me off of you. I don't care how good yeah. you are as a one-on-one player. You're going to call for that screen. And even then, you still going to need some more than that. You might as well go on and give me a double screen trip. I don't. I don't seen so many different types of screens and coverages. Like, I've gone to head coaches before the game, and I'm like, yo, y'all need to chill with putting me through all these screens. I'm like, I ain't for that tonight. And they'd be like, well, don't harass my best player. I'm like, what you expect? <laughs> now, you try to drop, you try to drop 30, you know? So it's like, that was that's my mindset on it. Like, I do prepare. I watch film. I watch games. I also watch my tendencies because I'll never forget I was a freshman. And we was playing zone, right? We was playing zone. That, that hides one-on-one defense. So shout out to the Q's. Shout out to the Q's, baby. Shout out to the Q's. <laughs> every, every time I'm in the league, and now you're starting to see a little more and a little more of teams playing zone. You don't really, you ain't really hear about teams playing zone in the league. So it kind of like I used to cringe when like people in the league would be like, "All right, let's play zone." I'm like, "No." Cause y'all ain't gonna play it right. Like y'all not y'all not gonna play yeah. a zone right. Like, y'all not gonna play it the way you really supposed to play a zone. We don't play yeah, that 100%. zone for five years. That shit's engraved in me. Like yeah, I can't exactly. get it out yeah. of my system. So man, Q was like, "Yo, you look terrible on defense." I'm like, "No, I don't." He's okay. Go back and watch some film of yourself, yo. I sat there, yo. I looked so freaking trash. I'm talking about walking to my spot, arms down, yeah. like yeah. just bad, just bad. That film will do it. That film don't lie. That film don't lie. And that's why, yo. When I when I see players and certain people doing <laughs> the same thing every year, I'm like, yeah, I know you're not watching film because you would see right. yourself and be just. Disgusted with how you look. I was so disgusted. I'm like, you will never catch me on film ever again looking that sorry. Like, I might mess mm-hmm. up, but I'm going to mess up going hard. Exactly. So I'm just going to, I just watch, I usually, <clears throat> I watch here who I guard, but I also watch how I'm defending them. Because now I'm starting to get details on myself because just as much as I'm watching film on you, I guarantee teams are watching film on how I guard to try and get For me sure. off of them. You know, because yep. it was like, what, the, the Vegas game, I'm starting to peep how teams are taking me out of the play now. They don't even want me in the play. So whoever exactly. I'm guarding, like we play in Vegas, and it was between Jackie Young and Kelsey Plum that I was kind of going back and forth for, right? And it got down to the nitty-gritty at the end. Anytime I guarded one, the other one got the, the other. ball. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just sitting in the corner like, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like, how? like, yo, like, how, how, how? They ended up winning that game because of that. And so, like, shout out to Becky Hammond because that's smart. That's a chess move. Because you know if yeah. I'm in that pick and roll, Kelsey Plum ain't want to see me. She came to me in the middle of the game and was like, yo, can you go guard somebody else? I'm like, fuck no. No, 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 Yo, like yeah. I've had players come up to me during the game, like, "Yo, chill, son," and I'm like, "No, you chill, son." Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, don't be so damn good. Like, it's, it's a it's a mutual respect. You know what I mean? Like, you no, want no, me to get off no, of you, no. and for damn sure I want to guard you for twenty freaking possessions, and then gotta go score on the other end. I'm tired. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. that's a fact. Yo, B, we'll, we'll get you out of here with this last one. I just kind of want you to talk about. Um, the evolution of the women's game and how far it's come, but also how far I think it still needs to be, you know, as far as, you know, the payment, uh, the travel arrangements, everything. Because we've seen if, especially from from this finals and, and past finals, but especially this one, that's the crowd that Vegas was bringing. If, if, if you was watching, it was sold out. It was, it mm-hmm. was loud in there. Um, and, and shit, women competing at a high fucking level. So kind of talk about, high, you know, how far it's come, level, but bro. how far it still needs Man. to be. I mean, of course, like if, if you, the women's game, right, is, it's been around for a while, but then you, you look at the WNBA, right? If we're going to talk about WNBA, it, it's only, it's only what I'm 28. So the WNBA is 26 years old. That's mm-hmm. young. Like if you yeah, look back young. at the NBA, when they were in their 25th year, they were trash, like complete and utter trash. So, you know, it's like people get so hung up on, oh, they're asking for too much. And it's like, no, we're not. Like the, the, the same league that you love and you want us to freaking dunk on nine inch rims and shit. Like that's this, this league is steadily growing. We ain't got to lower nobody's rims. We got freaking college kids, college women dunking. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that evolution right there is crazy to me. Like yeah. I'd be damned if I become somebody's poster. But like the idea to know <laughs> that that can happen in the future, I love it. Yeah. Like I, I genuinely love it. And then you talk about the money. Like now, okay, we want more money. Now the the money is coming from different avenues, and that's what I want people to understand. It's like it's not that we're not just talking about money just in in just like the actual particular profession or the sport. It's just in all aspects, just women have been under men when it comes to pay. So, you know, like I, with freaking soccer, they just, they won that settlement and they got millions of dollars from that Big settlement, time. but they, they fought extremely hard for that, you know? So it's like, it's starting to become a, you know, a more of a known thing. It's not really like a phase or a fad or, you know, Oh, they're just, they're just bitching. They're just talking. No, it, like people are really starting to pay attention and see that there is a lot of value in the women's game. And it's not just about sports. Like we have been on the forefront of a lot of movements. Like when it comes to the WNBA, we were like one of the spearheaders when it came to Black Lives Matter movement and when the George Floyd and 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 all of these deaths were happening in the black community. We are in the bubble still trying to figure out how we can use our voices for more than just basketball. Yeah. So you take you take all of that and you <clears throat> cup that together and you see that the value is much more than just, oh, we're talking about money. This money isn't just for our pockets. This money is for little girls to be able to see us as well because it's about the viewership. Like you said, you've got sold out crowds. You got the numbers going up on TV. They're finally putting us on ESPN, ESPN two. They're not putting us on these little, you know, rinky dink stations, even though we're grateful for the stations that played us, you know, it's like, y'all was playing us though. Like like we wasn't no professional athletes and we didn't deserve to be on the NBA TVs and ESPNs. Like, you got freaking marble shows playing on ESPN when we in the bubble, when you got games on games on games, like make it make sense. But now we made an uproar about that. Now you see us on ESPN more. Now we got to deal with CBS. Now we got to deal with NBA TV, you know, particular cities and states where they have these teams, you know, now they, they have those deals. So if, if I had to say like the one thing I do want, I want more teams. Like I want more teams because I feel like that would help the case in the sense of trying to grow the game because there's so much yeah. talent and there's only so much room in our league right now, right. which is crazy. Yeah, that's the, yeah. 
You know, it's 144 players, but mm, you look at each 12 teams, it's probably about one or two spots open on the roster. And now it's about money because now these teams, if you're keeping it a buck, they're going to go for cheaper players to build because they don't want to spend the bread to bring in these yeah, veterans yeah. That's, that you got to pay 150 up, you know, to 260 yeah. bands because yeah. you don't know what you're going to get out of them veterans. They might be stuck in their way. So they're going to go with the young cat who just got out the, who just got out of the, 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 out of college who already making money on the side. So they really don't care about that 72,000 that they're getting from our CBA. You know, like they're not worried uh, about yeah. it. They just, they're just hungry. So it's like, I want, I want to be able to have more teams because Atlanta is the only team that is in a eight state radius from every other team. Like, think about that. Like mm -hmm. Dallas is the next team. And then you go up and you have DC, Chicago, Indiana, uh, New York, um, who else is over there? Like, you know what I mean? Like that, that's crazy to say that Atlanta is the only team and all those Southern girls that are in that state, you got North Carolina, South Carolina, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it, it'd be dope. You put a team in South Carolina or it, Asia Wilson's from South Carolina. You got kids from Atlanta. You got kids from Virginia in our league or people that went to these schools. Why would you not have a hub in North Carolina? You got the whole triangle right there with NC State, yeah, freaking, Charlotte. Wake Forest, yes. Charlotte. You could put it right in Charlotte or throw a team back in Miami, put a team in Florida or put uh, put another team back in Texas or put a team in freaking Utah. I don't know, but it's like we need more teams because it's yeah. more girls playing basketball now. Yes, so it's like we absolutely. can't sit here and say we, we want to push the game, but then we don't want to expand either. Like we can't be lazy. Like we gotta be make able it to, make you know sense. I mean, give and take. Yeah, make it make sense. Like make it make sense, make it work. Cause it ain't that hard. You you just gotta sit down and just listen. Like that's all it is at the end of the day, is just literally sit down and just listen. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Like I that's what I want. And that's that was a great take. Like it gotta it gotta grow. Right. That, that that make a whole lot that make a whole lot of sense. Yo, B, we ain't gonna hold you up, man. We we appreciate you coming on. Q's legend. WNBA Facts. star and holding it down overseas, Euro League. Yo, B, you want you one of the coldest, man, for me, for real, man. That's just, a fact. Just on man, and off the court, man. Appreciate you. Hey, hey, oh, before we go off, Chris Joe, I want to tell you, man, that freaking that freaking arrow three lives rent free in my head till this day. I forgot who y'all playing, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. You did the yeah, air. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that shit was rent free in my that head. That was against Georgetown. Every, yep, Georgetown. Yo, 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 I was watching that game. I was like, mmm, that shit was nasty. And y'all beat that's him at your fucking. It was a, a doubleheader. It was a yep. double header, and I yep. remember I was like, "Yo, that's sick." I was like, "Nah, he put I out." I appreciate you. I was like, "Man, we gotta do that." I was like, "Bro, I, like, I appreciate you." Do that you. shit, shit brother. I was like, <laughs> so I, I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yo, yeah, B, man. appreciate good you. Good B. luck the rest of the season. Good luck the rest of the season, man. Yeah, good luck the rest of the season. All that. Good luck. Oh yeah, hell yeah, and um, shit, Chris, get my get my info from E two, man. We gotta stay in contact okay, for sure, for sure. Because no I'm doubt, trying to get no you doubt. out here, see this show prawn love. Yeah, 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 I'm with it. All right, y'all, this is it. dope, man. All right, B. All right, y'all. Yes, sir.